Based on the Hartman-Grobman theorem, we see that centers are really the delicate thing because you can't trust them if the linearization says that it's a center, but sometimes you really do have them. You really do have nonlinear centers. Here's an example. Consider the continuous time system dx dt equals 2y plus 4y cubed, and dy dt equals minus 2x minus 4x cubed. Now you can see that there's an equilibrium at the origin. You can see that there's a sort of a symmetry in this system. Let's investigate. The linear part is staring right at you. That means that the linearization at the origin is given by 0, negative 2, 2, 0, and that's a center. But is it? Does this really have a center at the origin or not? Well, if we simulate it, we can look at what happens. And boy, it sure looks like a center. It just looks a little deformed. This is not perfectly circular. Of course, those higher order terms matter. Well, this is fine as far as simulations go, but how do we know that this really is a nonlinear center? How do we know that a neighborhood of the origin is filled up with periodic orbits? Well, here is a bit of inspiration. Let us consider the following function, phi, given by x squared plus y squared plus x to the fourth plus y to the fourth. Where did that come from? Hmm, it seems like I've sort of integrated something from the differential equations. Well, let's consider what the derivative of phi with respect to t looks like. I can use the chain rule, and I can say that d phi dt is partial phi partial x times dx dt plus partial phi partial y times dy dt. Remembering what dx dt and dy dt are, plugging that in, what do I get? Well, let's see, the partial in x is 2x plus 4x cubed, and then dx dt is 2y plus 4y cubed, and then the partial with respect to y is 2y plus 4y cubed, and then dy dt is minus 2. Ah, yes, that's it. This perfectly balances, this vanishes, this gives us d phi dt equals 0. Such a phi is called an integral, and this function is constant along orbits of this dynamical system. This leads us to a more general definition. We say that a system is integrable, some people like the word conservative, if there exists an integral, a function that is locally non-constant. I'm going to call this function phi. It goes from the plane to the reals, and this function needs to be constant along orbits. So in continuous time, an integral phi satisfies d phi equals zero. In discrete time, it's e phi equals phi. That is, in continuous time, if I take the derivative of phi of x of t with respect to time, I get zero. In discrete time, if I look at phi of x n plus one, it has to match phi of x n. Now, not all systems are integrable. It's a somewhat rare condition. But when such an integral exists, interesting things happen. Here's one such interesting item. Lemma, orbits of an integrable 2D system lie within the level sets of the integral phi, and the only equilibrium types that are possible are saddles, centers, and degenerate equilibria. No sources, no sinks, no spirals, none of that. Here's a proof. The first item, well, that's by definition. If the integral is constant along orbits, then the orbits lie within level sets. No big deal there. The second item, the one constraining the equilibrium types, we can argue by contradiction is one way to do it. Consider a node, a source, or a sink. Spiral, non-spiral, doesn't matter. Because phi is continuous and constant along orbits, I can take any point in a neighborhood of this equilibrium and go either forwards or backwards in time to converge to the equilibrium. That implies, by continuity, by definition of an integral, that this function phi is constant in a neighborhood of this equilibrium. And recall, in order to be integrable, this phi has to be locally non-constant. That's the proof. That means you can't have nodes. 
Now, you can have saddles, you can have centers, and in fact, those are very, very typical in integrable systems. Discrete, continuous time, doesn't matter. But of course, you've probably already seen what the problem is here. Given a system, is it integrable? Does phi exist? If so, what is it? How do you find it? Well, we can't give a complete answer to that question, but there is a special class of integrable systems in 2D continuous time that is very nice. Here's the definition. A 2D continuous time system is said to be Hamiltonian if, for some continuously differentiable function h from the plane to the reals, we can express our system as dx dt equals partial h partial y, and dy dt equals minus partial h partial y. X. Now, what is this? Why do we care about this? Well, observe such an H is an integral for this system. I'm going to leave it to you to compute the HDT, plug in these values, and what you're going to find is that you get the second partial in H with respect to Y first, then X, minus the second partial in H with respect to X first, then Y. Using the fact that mixed partial derivatives commute gives us zero. H is an integral. And that means that in such a Hamiltonian system, you're going to see saddles and centers, and that's it. So now everything just boils down to figuring out whether a system is Hamiltonian or not. Not every integrable system is Hamiltonian, but all Hamiltonian systems are integrable. And the good news is that if you're working in continuous time on the plane, then we can answer these questions. Here's a lemma. A continuously differentiable system, dx equals f of x, on the full plane is Hamiltonian if and only if the divergence of that right-hand side vanishes. That's pretty cool because that's easy to check. Here's the proof. In one direction... So if it's Hamiltonian, the divergence is zero. That's the computation we just did. That all boils down to mixed second derivatives commuting. The other direction is a little bit more delicate. If the divergence everywhere vanishes, how do you reconstruct that Hamiltonian? How do you know that it exists? There is something that you may have seen back in multivariable calculus. It goes by the fancy name of the Poincaré lemma. Not the last time you're going to hear that name. And one of the things that it says is that, if you like, divergence-free vector fields are curls. So any vector field that is divergence-free can be represented as the curl of some other vector field. Now, we're in the 2D plane, but you could lift everything to 3D, apply this, and reconstruct your H that way. That's kind of the clunky way to do it. There are fancier versions of the Poincaré lemma that allow us to conclude this automatically. One way or the other, the important thing to remember is that if the divergence is zero, you get a Hamiltonian system. That's very nice. Only works in the plane, only works in 2D continuous time, but it does work.